Hello everybody and welcome to Kerbal Space Program The Journey Continues. Uh, this is a follow-on series from my uh, The Journey Begins series which I uh, did to kick off the channel almost uh, a little over a year ago now in fact. Um, so if you want to go back and watch that then uh, by all means feel free but be warned it, it was one of the first things I ever did on YouTube so uh, yeah there's that. Hmm. Anyway, everything here is looking shiny and new, but, well, this bit isn't looking particularly shinier or newer, but uh, I have upgraded from 1.4.5 to 1.7.2. Uh, it's about bloody time. So, uh, yeah, we'll be taking advantage of some of the new features that that brings and uh, just some of the general gameplay improvements. Just as a quick note, I will be using 1.7 across all my videos now. Uh, hopefully it won't take me as long to upgrade next time, but uh, moving on. For those of you who didn't watch The Journey Begins, this is just a basic science mode playthrough. Uh, I've got a few mods just to make it a bit more interesting. I've got uh, Interstellar, Near Future Construction, Kerbal Inventory System, Kerbal Attachment System. Uh, I've got a couple of utility mods, Kerbal Engineer, Kerbal Alarm Clock. Um, those are the main ones. Anything else, I'll sort of introduce it as we come to it. So, this series starts where the other one left off, with our Kerbals having just returned from their mission to Juna, where they acquired exactly one metric butt-ton of science for us. That Juna mission was, of course, the uh, the end goal of the last series, which I sort of developed as the series went on. And I'm starting this series in much the same way. I don't have a firm goal in mind. I do have a bit of an inkling as to what it might end up being, but, uh, well, more on that at a later date. Anyway, that's all the groundwork out of the way, so... Uh, well, I suppose we should actually go and do something now. And, um, well, I don't think there's a better place to start than by spending some of that science we mentioned. So here we are in the R&D Centre, and I'm just going through and selecting the technologies I want to research. Uh, we'll be doing this the same way I did the last series. We're trying to do it sort of one tier, one layer at a time. Um, unless there's something really kind of mission critical in there, in which case I might jump ahead a little bit. But uh, apart from that, we'll try and, we'll try and keep that as a self-imposed restriction. The science we earned from Juna isn't quite enough to unlock all of that eight tier of science, um, but we're only we're only a few hundred short, so uh, it shouldn't take us long to just grab that last technology. But anyway, we're about what two and a half minutes into this video now. I think it's well past the time we should fire somebody or something into space. So here we are, blasting off from the launch pad for the first time this series, and this time it's with the upgraded launch system for our Mark III shuttle, the Swan. This is a slightly upgraded version of the shuttle I was using in the last series. It's nothing major, just some minor tweaks, but with the new launch system, this can now lift more to low Kerbin orbit than any of my other vehicles I've designed for this series so far. Um, it can't quite do as much with it once it's got it into low Kerbin orbit, but, uh, well, we can work on that. Anyway, on this mission, we have Valentina Kerman in the command seat, and she's joined by Bill, Bob, and Bargel Kerman. Bargel, of course, being the only Kerbal not to be involved in the last episode of the last series, so um, I thought I'd just give her the fourth seat. Hopefully go some way towards rectifying that. Anyway, this mission is a reasonably simple one. We just want to go up and start to refuel our uh, our interplanetary vehicle, the Ptolemy, which is docked at our space station, the Aristotle, and um, we're going to want to refuel it pretty quickly because we want to send it straight back out to gather some more science and do some more exploration. Now, the Ptolemy is a pretty big vehicle, and we did drain pretty much all its fuel in that mission, so, uh, yeah, this is going to take us about three lifts to refuel the main vehicle, and, um, well, then we've got some other stuff to do, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Now, because these refueling missions would kind of put us a little over the Delta V capabilities of this craft uh, in the cargo bay, as well as the fuel for the refueling, we've also got a separate container, and that's just for us. Give us a little bit of extra Delta V so we can actually finish this mission. Um, but there's no point in uh, carrying more weight than we need, so once we're in orbit, we uh, transfer all the remaining fuel from that container into our main tanks, and then just ditch the container to fall back down to Kerbin. Also on this vehicle, we do have those reserve monopropellant thrusters. We do carry a pretty big tank of monopropellant on this thing, just for all the manoeuvring it's going to need to do uh, during any mission. But uh, as we're going to be getting cl pretty close to this vehicle's Delta V limit, we do need to use those monopropellant engines for any manoeuvre we can, where there's not, not really a need for a sudden burst of Delta V. So anyway, this part of the mission is pretty much par for the course. We get our orbits aligned, we faff about doing our rendezvous manoeuvres, um, yeah, it's worth noting that in all of today's missions, each and every single one, despite having done it however many times previously, 
I always forget to let the uh, to let the space station fly past me as I'm sat on Kerbin, so then I can get a rendezvous with it without actually having to go round Kerbin several times. So I have to go around Kerbin several times, and trust me, by the fourth time, this gets pretty irritating. But after all that, uh, we do arrive at the Ptolemy and at the space station, so we make our way into dock. We dock straight onto the Ptolemy, uh, on the side opposite to where it's docked to the space station, and then we can get to transferring our fuel and getting back home. As another side note, I discovered whilst I was setting up for this episode that, uh, well, between the 1.4 and the 1.7 versions of Kerbal Attachment System, they changed the way the struts worked, um, the way you, the, the struts you can attach with your Kerbals in space work. Now you either have to use cables or you have to use these ruddy great things called, well, the simplest version of them are called tow bars. But uh, yeah, sorting that out wasn't fun. I had to do this before I did this episode, just to kind of set things up so that they were pretty much as we left them uh, in the last episode of the last series. So anyway, with their mission complete, our Kerbals can undock and make their way home. Um, the uh, the journey back was pretty uneventful, but I haven't played this craft for a while, so I completely underestimated the amount of space I needed to leave myself to actually get back to the KRC successfully. Um, so I, I completely flew past it, and that's when some other difficulties hit. Now, when I designed this craft, I designed it so that it would fly well, sort of towards the end of a typical mission. There would... Um, There'd be a bit of fuel left, there'd be quite a lot of monopropellant left, and the cargo bay would be empty, but we've flown this craft right to its limits, so all the fuel tanks are empty, and it's still got that empty fuel tank we used to refuel the Ptolemy in the cargo bay, which made it quite nose-heavy and meant I couldn't really control it, and... Um, yeah, we crashed into the sea. I knew we were going to have to ditch, but um, yeah, this was a little harsher than I would have liked. But, you know, no big deal. Just some kinks to be ironed out, and uh, well, we've got three more missions to do, so we've got ample opportunity to do just that. And so we blast off with the second mission. An identical craft, an identical cargo, and an identical objective. Uh, what's not identical is the crew, however. This time we have Kurdar, Bargel, and Johnny Kerman. Um, for those of you who watched the journey begin, let's, yeah, let's not start that again. Anyway, Jebediah didn't have a lot to do last time, so we brought him along for the ride in the fourth seat. So we get up to orbit, we ditch that extra fuel tank, and the whole mission progresses, well, as I said, exactly the same. Um, because this is the second time I've done this mission, uh, it does go a little bit more according to plan, so we, uh, we do save a marginal amount of fuel over last time, which is nice. One thing I did want to discuss whilst we're watching uh, watching the highlights of this mission is the uh, the fact that the episode structure of this series will change a little bit. During the journey begins, I made sure there was at least one segment that was uh, that was done as live in every episode. Uh, this series, I'm not going to be gunning for that quite as hard. This episode, for instance, uh, I don't have an as live segment, but. Uh, I thought it was better just to sort of keep it for as and when it was appropriate, because in the last series I just ended up doing sort of the, exactly the same thing in like two or three consecutive episodes, which which isn't very good to watch. Anyway, with all our fueling done and dusted, it's time to make our way back home once again. Just after we perform our uh, deorbit burn, I do get rid of that fuel tank from the cargo bay, and that, along with the uh, little bit of extra fuel we've got left this time, should hopefully help the handling a lot. Now, uh, this time it appears I did my deorbit in the right place, but I don't get my approach right, and uh, I'm having to panic at the last minute trying to get this thing lined up with the runway and lose enough energy, and I start bouncing on the runway, and by the time I'm down and apply my brakes, we just roll off the end, and um, yeah, not so good. But, you know, it's an improvement, so uh, who knows? Will I actually manage to land the damn thing properly on the runway next time? Place your bets now. And so it's time for our third and final refueling mission. Jebediah Kerman is leading a team of all four orange suits for this one. Once again, it's pretty much the same stuff, and uh, once again we managed to make some more marginal improvements on the fuel use, but uh, again, hardly anything to jump up and down in celebration of. There is a slight change to this mission, however. Uh, we don't need a full one of those fuel tanks to uh, refuel the liquid fuel tanks on the Ptolemy. They're nearly full. What we do need to start refueling is that little fuel tank right on the end of the Ptolemy. 
Now that fuel tank is a liquid fuel oxidizer mix tank and it's designed to refuel the uh, the lander should we have it on any particular mission. We've only got enough fuel on this particular mission to refill it uh, halfway but um, well that tank isn't going to be there for very much longer but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. So once again we dock with the space station, uh, we do our slightly more complicated refueling this time and uh, before too long we're done and dusted and it's time to make our way home for the third time today. So this time the deorbit goes well, uh, this time the approach goes well and uh, do I manage to land this thing properly on the runway? You bet your ass I do. When I was actually playing through this uh, I didn't notice when my wheels hit the runway, that's how good a landing this was and in case anybody's new to the channel and is wondering why I'm making such a big deal out of this, generally speaking my landing skills aren't great, shall we say. Now after I finished that mission, I don't know why I just had an inkling that I should check the science lab on the space station, so I checked it and what do you know, it's nearly full to the brim of science, so we download that and that gives us enough to get that last technology of the 8th tier of the tech tree. Now the, uh, the ones in tier 9 cost a thousand science points apiece, so uh, we're going to need a pretty big mission if we're going to accumulate any significant quantity of those, so uh, yeah, we need to get the Ptolemy fueled up and ready to go as soon as possible, and uh, who knows, maybe another vehicle as well, but uh, maybe I've said too much. So now, for one final time today, we are blasting off from the KSC. This time, Valentina Kerman leads a team consisting of Bargel, Johnny and Curdard, and my god, this one took an age. The raw footage of this mission is an hour and 46 minutes long, so, uh, well, you might be doing quite a lot during this mission, you might think, but uh, no, mostly it's down to me not planning it correctly and doing things in a strange order that I probably shouldn't have done them in, but, um, well, what's done is done, let's see what happens. So it starts off pretty standard stuff, we get up to a nice low curb in orbit, um, we don't ditch that extra fuel tank, we don't need it, uh, the, the payload isn't that heavy this time, but it is pretty big. I have packed things into that cargo bay like I've never packed stuff into a cargo bay, and uh, it does cause some minor issues later on in the, in the mission, but uh, nothing we can't resolve. There is a fuel tank in the cargo bay, it contains the other half of the fuel for that last fuel tank on the Ptolemy, um, but uh, I notice a little bit into the mission that I forgot to actually forbid that fuel, so the shuttle's been using some of that, but uh, we can juggle the fuel about later, it's not a big issue. So we get to the Ptolemy, we dock, and then the fun and games begin. We open the front half of that cargo bay so we can transfer uh, what remains of that fuel onto the Ptolemy, and then we take the rest out of the uh, the shuttle's uh, main fuel tanks, just so that balances it up, so um, all the fuel we wanted to transfer across has been transferred across. So having fueled that last section on the Ptolemy, we're going to take it off. Because that's not staying there. This shuttle contains the new engine block for the Ptolemy. A new engine block with upgraded engines, but uh, we'll come on to that at a later date. And the reason we've completely fueled the old one up is so that the new one is completely empty and it's easier to manoeuvre into place. Our next job is to get our two new tugs out of the shuttle bay to manoeuvre this new block into place. Now these are just general purpose tugs, they're going to stay up here with the space station just in case they're needed in the future. Unfortunately where I packed them in so tight, we do have a bit of a job getting them out, but uh, we manage it eventually. It has kind of thrown us massively away from the Ptolemy and the space station, but uh, well, we'll sort that. I mean, it, it takes us a while, but we do sort it. So having cut most of the fun and games out, we do finally manage to get our tugs to uh, dock that new engine block to the Ptolemy. Then it's just a case of bringing the shuttle with the old engine block into dock so we can transfer all that fuel across. It was embarrassingly far into this sequence of events when I realised that I probably should have just transferred all the fuel from the old block into the shuttle's main tank because that would have made the whole thing much easier to manoeuvre. So with all the fuel transferred and with one of the tugs having run off to dock with the space station, we now dock the old engine block back into the space shuttle ready for us to take down to burn up in the atmosphere. And with all that said and done, and with our second tug joining its friend, it's time for us at long last, to make our way home. Just after we make our deorbit burn, as we did with the uh, with the fuel tank in the last two missions, 
we ditch that uh, old engine block and make our way towards a rendezvous with the KSC. We make a good approach and we make a, a reasonably good landing, and that is this mission, and all of today's missions, and indeed, this episode, at an end. So that will be all for today, everybody. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Join us next time as we, uh, we've we just got to get the lander on the Ptolemy refueled, uh, get it a new crew, and it's ready to go. And um, I may have mentioned something about a new vehicle. Hmm, who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.